okay this is a data set having some features of IPL features you need now from today okay today you understand that features are nothing but the columns okay all those things are your features that's it important and rest the materials I think I have shared some PPTs I have shared in a drive so you can look on to these things okay like regarding the machine learnings regression uh, algorithms PPTs and a uh, lot KNN and all those things okay so you can go through with the PPTs to understand those things okay if having doubts you can ask in the classrooms okay so this has got some features uh, let's look under the features start your columns and you have all these things something unnamed dot 17 we don't need it now let's see if something is there or not What is there? Okay, all null values. So let's delete this. Deleting is. Hmm? Oh, uh, you can set the job title. It's not really much needed. Other ways are also there, but when you are going with the index, you don't have to every time check the things as index. Okay, uh, columns clear. Okay. Now uh, we'll be asking you some questions, some cool questions, two three questions, and then we'll be uh, heading towards. I have made some of the uh, IPMD files for you where the projects have been made over. Okay, so we'll be just going through it. So you can, it should be easy to understand the things, right? Okay, so from here, if I need to ask you, and my very first question. Okay, uh, how many from you have chosen for Microsoft Python examinations? From your past, how many? No one. Okay. All right, fine. So, uh, two is there. No problem. I'll upload a file where you'll be getting questions and answers regarding your Microsoft examination. Okay. So you can go through it, and you know that will be coming in examination. Some questions, forty-eight questions are there, I guess, and out of which in examinations you'll be getting around thirty-eight. So it would be easier to have it okay okay from here my question is uh, before going to team how many seasons data we have first question answer anyone I like to tell you what are seasons. These are an ampere that you can get from 2008 to 2017. And let me elaborate it. So these are the details. How many seasons data you are having? It is being asked. What do you think? Anyone from there, Hanshuman? It's a unique, unique function. Unique functions. Values after what it is. So unique values are there. Eight to seventeen. Good. Sizes ten seasons data. Okay, this is fine. Next question. If you understood right, unique functions give you 
or you can apply set for that all right uh, how is this how many teams participated in last 10 as we are having 10 years data so last 10 years yeah, how many teams participate in the last 10 years? Just have a quick review of your videos, what you have seen. I guess this was there in the videos. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let me give you teams data too. Like team 1 and team 2 are there. Two teams are there. Apply your brain and tell me the answer quick. So we use the size function and uh, same as before, I think so we use the unique and size function and then we pass it to a variable for team one and then we pass it for a, a pass another variable for team two. Uh, you mean to say this uh, yes sir and uh, for uh, another team we'll pass we'll use another variable this yes sir so and then we add both of them ah this is your mistake we don't add both of them we find the unique ones and then add them ah uh, you have got the answer 13 that's it See what happens in IPL if you know, right? Every team get a chance to play with the another team. So whatever the teams would be there in the team one also would be there in team two. Right? Yes, yes. So unique will be uh, if uh, any one of them you are finding anyone's team one or team two unique, you'll be getting the answer. Okay? So 13 would be the answer. All right, from a, a team two and team one from wherever you go, you would be having it there. Okay, 13 would be the correct answer. Don't go for 36. All right. Uh, okay. I think uh, you might have gone with the C bonds too in the videos, right? There would be some graphics and all. Okay. Now, can, we, can you tell me, like, if I want to find the data frame, anyone? So, if I want to see that in how many matches their DL was applied. For now it is no, I want to see in which matches it is being applied. Yeah. Quick, we have a lot of things to do today. Anyone else, Sam Shuman? We need to... What is mean by season values? Okay, Prash is asking season values, what it means. Uh, see, this data frame is having a season which says 2011. Right, season values basically gives you that these much seasons data we are having. Okay, like if I show you, so it says 2008 season data it is having this much, 2009 season data it is having this much, 2010 data it is having this much, like that. Okay, so these much matches played in 2008, 2009, 2010, and like that, we have data still 2017 right so that is your 10 years data okay one season one year that is your season just a minute fine okay uh, yeah my question uh, where it is where it is what was my question deal applied How many matches DL was applied? Yeah, anyone? Amjad, Mansi, Nepur. Where are data science students?
no okay uh, any guesses how would be making it sir we can uh, use uh, we can just uh, uh, apply the column name uh, like df square brackets the column name and uh, uh, double equals to yes capital y it will give a boolean answer i think so just a minute this no some guys were not there mm -hmm. so a df of tl applied equal equals to yes like this yes obviously some boolean results would be there hmm So you need to find the true results. How many true are there? Then, sir, we'll have to set the DL applied as index. Some Prachi has given something. Let me go with that also. Okay. The other student has given np dot where df dot matches. Uh, don't go with matches function. This will give you every time an error. Okay. So you need to go with df dot dl applied and equals to y oops fact hmm. so these are the places where you get a correct result 40 6 33 yeah okay fine any else okay. So uh, you can over the size. Uh, we want basically the size. How many matches, right? Then with this length out, I think that is in in a tuple. Uh, is that in tuple? Yeah, that is a tuple. So you copy this thing out from here, and this is your size. In place of this, any other thing. Okay, so, uh, Anshuman was giving this that df of dl applied equal equals to y. Can we do this? Just one single thing. And sir, if you use the dot size function with it, then. Then you'll be getting every large size, 221. That is column and rows multiplied. So you need to find index size. Got it? So how does index function help? Index will give you basically that is the exact details what here it is being given. Right? So what index is giving? See, uh, if I run this, what are you getting? Serial numbers, season, these are your index, 40, 43, 60, 60 and all. Right? Okay, sir, got it, got it. So, size will be giving you this correct result. If you, uh, sorry, uh, what is that? Index size will be giving you a correct result. If you write size, what you will be getting? The index multiplied your columns. So, all values would be one index multiplied by all the columns. And so, the 221 was there. Uh, so, every is, uh, every column or every row here is having y so 13 matches with that with the dl was applied and these are the season in 2008 to the you can go with the rest of this okay so it is easy i guess right okay moving ahead uh rest details um iris data set because we'll be going through a lot of things today projects are being uh, kept there i'll just show you how to make it okay so you have to go through it and then you have to make it accordingly Okay, I'll show you how sample things look like. Okay. Uh, okay. Now next questions. If I ask you which team has been most successful team ten years? Any answer? Quick. See the data frame again. I'll just show you a sample. 
for those who join now you are late a lot of things have been done okay so this is your sample now how you will tell best team Any attribute what we will be using it win by runs no win by wickets no man of the match is again no only winner can decide two teams winner can decide right which team has won or which team has been the best the team has uh, the same team which has won for the most number of times would be the winner obviously okay. All right, so uh, let's do that. TF. So all these teams has won at least one time. So we need to find the value counts of the team because we'll be having same team winning for multiple times. In that case, we will be using value counts, and we need the top team. So I'll be using one and I think, uh, yeah, exactly, MI, 92, 92 times, okay, these are the things. So, so can you tell how value count works? Value count works, okay, fine. So see, uh, if I say df of winner dot value. So there could be some teams, mostly, which has won for most number of times. Like, see, KKR would be there for more than one, MI more than one, RR more than one. So what value count does, it just calculates all the, uh, uh, you can say, the unique names or the unique uh, winners from here, okay? And then it will give a count, like, in. Uh, in the numpy dot so it finds the highest number of occurrences yeah in ascending order like no sorry in descending order it gives you right like in np dot where we used to find in uh, an index count right index count like exactly that like when we use an np where right like value index value like that np dot np dot where and then we used to write some results there as your, your data and then we used to write value counts and then index count like, like that so that is your basically value count so it sorts your data in descending order that would be much easier way to say more number of results taken in one side and like if I don't write this one you will be getting all uh, data of your system. For right unique, so I guess every team has won at least for one time, right? So there you see in the de uh, decreasing order, M I C S K K K R C B and like that. Uh, these are the data till 2017. Now, who has been the best man of math? Say, Here we get a lot of values. So same value counts work a lot. I think Chris Gale, yeah, 80 times. Right. Let's see the top five ABT videos. Uh, yeah, 15. One of 15, Ryan of 15. Like that it goes okay and you can see the graphs if you need to find the graphs too the data would be df dot this so 
So this is your graph, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18. A lot of things have been shared in the videos and the materials, how you can go through the things. If you also need to write the names, okay? Okay, uh, now let me come back to your things in machine learning. You both data science and AI are having this regression kind of thing, okay? Now what exactly is regression? You'll need to unlock your iPhone first. Uh, what is this now? Okay, the CD works a lot. All right, so now when I say that, what is regression? So this is an analysis where your variables, you know, like your X and Y, what we say, okay? Like what do we make it as Y equals MX plus C, okay? So dependent and an independent variables we talk about here. So this is a relation between your dependent and your independent variables. So this makes a basically a relation this is called as linear regression with y equals mx plus c like that there are logistic regressions okay a lot of things are there so basically it makes a straight line where the most points of your graph comes closer to form a straight line where most of the things lies just very closer to the line the points are very closer to the line you will see some graphs, okay, amplitudes and all are shared in the drives, so you can look on there, and the materials are shared with a lot of things, okay, so you can get it there. So we have some of the projects with that cases, and it comes to uh, see the algorithms first, okay, I'll just show you that what could be the best algorithms you are, when you're making some projects over there. Like uh, in Sys Python version, formatted Sys versions, you'll be getting SciPy versions, numpy versions and all these sklearn versions okay and all this okay so when you are working with some projects and all today i'll just show you some sample projects how to deal up with the things and then you have to make it okay so uh libraries pandas pl uh, plotting scatter matrix not needed okay sk model selection needed classification report confusion matrix accuracy score uh, logistic regression decision tree classifier not needed and then never see. depends on you if you need it you can load it for now i have made it like you have to uh, see the things so i have made it right okay now uh, you can retrieve data from directly from the url if in, even if you don't have it in your drives or in your directories you know so you can write url and you can read csv from the url and names okay so names basically all these data column names okay now I've printed it and the shapes are you can see there. Describe functions and all we have seen. Group by class. Okay. Or you can find the value counts. So you need to try uh, understand like value counts and this thing goes same. No? Class. You think the class. Here, here it is giving a class which is nothing but the species. Okay. So same thing if I come back here and if I show you here that this could be data set and here I this and I guess same things are there okay now what I was saying is df dot the same thing done there using the class can be accessed df dot species dot the value counts the same thing okay that's I think clear right so <coughs> group by working is that someone please mute the mic just a second someone's mic is on hello Yes. Hello, sir. Yeah, hello. Uh, sir, uh, in this ID data set, uh, you say that uh, regression is some dependent variable, independent variable. Mm -hmm. In the data set ID, uh, so there are uh, where, where the uh, independent variable and what is the independent variable in this data set? Yeah, we'll tell. We'll tell. Okay. 
dependent is something like on which you have to bring your outcomes like if we look here in this data set right when we'll be making project we'll learn that out of this what is the most important thing as an output we want that is species what are these four things these are nothing but the attributes right so on the basis of all these four attributes we would be predicting the species right so this species is your independent no, sorry dependent because based on all these four it would be predicted right so like if i write your this statement y equals mx plus c so this y is dependent on your x yeah why is dependent on your x? Yes. If you don't write, if you don't know the values of x, how you'll be getting y. Same here, what happens is species is based on your sepal length, okay, on your sepal width, on your petal length, and your petal width. And these all have some of the weights, like a, b. I'll show you how weights works, okay? D, like that. So these are your independent variables. Right? Clear? Okay. Uh, let me come back here. So here it would be df grip by your species and then come into the size, be giving you the same things. Okay, uh, let's come back here. So now in the data, when we go through, we have two kind of data, like univariate data and bivariate data. When you have more than one column to go through, find the things, you say it as a univariate data. When you have more than one, you say as a bivariate data. And you'll be dealing with a project called as FIFA 1, where you will be dealing with 53 columns, obviously a bivariate data. Okay, so univariate to understand across each attribute. Okay, so you have seen the plotting the data kind, box plot is there, subplots equals true, and layout is two cross two, that is two rows and two columns, share x false and share y is false. You don't need to go with the share x and share y right now. Okay, so simple width, simple lengths, and all has been shared here. Basically, all these are nothing but the ranges of where from where to where the values are been there. So like in the sepal width, it starts from something around two point something, ends at something three point. In sepal length, it starts something from four and ends at something six. Okay, like that, the values are there. Okay. All right, uh, then it just shows a histogram to your different ways. Matrix data set, the same thing you have also seen in the, uh, what is that? Mm, pair plot. Same thing you have seen in the pair plot I have shown you, right? Model selection and all, nothing, you don't focus on here right now. You see that the different algorithms here used are logistic regression, linear discriminant analysis, k neighbors classifier, decision tree classifier, and Gaussian B and S support vectors. Okay, so here the results have been there. Okay, and this I'll let you know that what is X train, X Y train, and all when we will be doing like project right now, we'll be learning it. What is this all? Okay, uh, and the results are there and we see the best accuracy of the results in the linear discriminant analysis that is 97% so your data need not to be uh, very much accurate okay? if it is having an accuracy of um, 90 to 95 or 87 to 95 even or 80 to 95 even it is said to be a good model not a best model but a good model less than 80 is um, okay model fine Okay, so you need to uh, work more on your data. And more than 95 is uh, definitely an incorrect model. Because there, if you are getting 100% results, if you are getting very less results, if you are getting um, uh, better than results, you can say 96, 97, 98%, right? So that can have a very less data. In those cases, if you are using regressions, then in regressions, if you are getting the same results, then we can say that the data is insufficient so that we are getting the accurate data, accurate accuracy, okay. Uh, let's come back to the thing here, okay, now check it. 
So it'll be using matplotlib inline, seaborn matplotlib, numpy, and pandas. And I have a data that is full data CSV. Okay. And this data has got this name, nationality, national position, national kit, club, club position, club kit, club joining, contact expiry, rating and send. Then you can see some dots over there because this data set is having 53 columns. And these are the attributes. GK positioning, GK diving, goalkeepers, kicking, goalkeeper handling, goalkeeper reflexes, right? So everything has been shared there in the terms of your attributes, the columns you call it as an attributes, okay? So you can find it there, seven rows and 53 columns. All right, seven players and 53 columns. All right, so out of this, delete the national kit because that is unwanted, we don't require it. Okay, so count plot gives you some nationality, palette I'm using set two and plot all the nations on the y axis. Okay, if you give if your x is equals one, it will be giving you the row axis, that is your horizontals. Okay, so Portugal and all I can see most from the England and then from France, Sweden, Spain, uh, Argentina, like that. Okay, all countries data has been there. Now, uh, plotting just a thing, right? That is your age. So, which age uh, players are more here? Okay, so age can be figured out. So you're gonna use fixed size, 15 cross six. Okay, 15 spaces cross six spaces over there. And then your age is being given. Plot it down, the maximum average age, what you can see here is between your 25, okay, and to 23 to 25, you can say the best one. Okay. So most uh, keepers, sorry, most players from there. Now if you want to find the best goalkeeper, so all the columns, what you can see here, uh, needs to have actually a lot of, you know, the, what is that called as? Attributes, right? So weights should be there. So if all the columns are there, these much columns, what you can see? Name, then uh, for the player, weak foot, poor crit of a player, if I say that, if I want to say that he is the best defender, then what all categories should come inside a defender, right? Out of all these columns, what all categories should be coming inside a defender? So if it is coming inside a defender in that case, then how much uh, you can say the attributes values should be there. Like if I say a keeper is there, right? So keeper should have, um, you can say some less attributes as compared to defender. Uh, attacker something whatever the attributes you want right so uh, we'll be creating some four variables 0.5 1 2 3 as ABCD okay and then I will be training my data how I'll be saying that TF of a goalkeeper short stopper two categories are there, there okay so for short stopper the reactions of the goalkeeper I'm giving us to be B right now what is that B that is weight of 1 so same in these things, composure, DF speed, the strengths, jumping, positioning, diving, reflexes, and all these, and then divided by all the, you know, like uh, two, four, two, one, whatever we have taken here, right? So all those uh, averages, okay? And then the sweeper. Same things when we go and when we plot, these are nothing, okay, don't go with all these things, right? We, this is just for plotting up the things. Okay. So the results you have got here only. If you are plotting, we are get manual near as the best short stopping score here. So for short stopping, the best is manual near. Okay. And same goes with the sweeping score. For sweeping score also we find the best one as a manual near. So we can say that the best goalkeeper is there in the manual near. Okay. Like four defenders, defenders have different uh, functions, different attributes. So for defenders also you need to go with the things okay and then you can find the lcd that is your left central defender and you can find it there okay then the right central defender and same with the central defender okay right wing back and midfielders again three kind of things are there playmaker beast and controllers so playmaker could be there ozil and then the beast would be this okay 
and the attackers are the final ones with the ADD as a left wing, right wing and the striker. So we all know, right, the results of the left wing and right wing would be obviously everyone knows, right? So the left wing will be having the Ronaldo and the right will be having it, let's Messi and in the striker would be having Strabat, okay? So like this, attributes and all has to be mentioned, right? So these are the importance of weights. So which attribute has to be given what weights is important, okay? All right, uh, let's come back here and uh, let me tell you right now, okay? So when we'll be dealing with logistic, logistic is where, see, in linear uh, regressions, when you look on a linear graph, okay? So I also seen previous in the videos also, you might have seen it. And in the graphs also, you might have seen it. Or else I'll show you here just a minute. See, this is a linear regression line. What here you can see that the points here are in the zero and in the one. Now this is a case of a logistic regression. Now why? See, this is a linear regression line which is a straight line. Now only one and two points are crossing with this line. So what linear regression does, it makes an algorithm when we train our data and then it trace and it then when it makes a line, what happens, all these points comes closer. So it makes such a line where the point comes closer. So it will get those things in the 50s. Okay. So uh, coming back to here. So we need to import it from sklearn.linear model. And if we need to go with the reports and all, we confusion matrix will be using this classification reports, confusion matrix from the sklearn. Okay. So uh, let's just go back here. So what things are needed in your project is the classes, the intercept, you know what is intercept, y intercept, y equals m h plus c, or m and c, that's it, your coefficients, okay. Evaluating your models, predicting the probabilities are the best things, okay. And probabilities are always predicted using your output data and your training data. And that is different thing, we'll go. Confusion matrix is a very important part. Confusion matrix basically tells you the actual predicted and wrong predicted values, okay. Like here, if I say a confusion matrix says 3106, that is there were total 10 data, 3 plus 1, 4 and 4 plus 6 equals 10. So total 10 data were there, out of which actual zeros were 3 and predicted zeros were also 3, that is these were the correct data. And actual predicted one is 1 and actual 1 was 6, okay. So here it is one wrong data, right? You need to understand it. Actual one here is zero, but still we have predicted one. Predicted ones is one only and actual ones was zero. So basically if you see the graph, oh sorry, see the data, so what is there? One, two, three, three zeros and rest of the things. Okay. I think this one is something else if the above one is there, right? So in that case, you were having four, right? So this is your confusion matrix and then your classification reports, accuracy scores, improving models. Okay, uh, let's come back to and this is the graph which says your logistic regression because in that case when you have graphs where it just have values in the zeros and in the ones, so you need to go, you need to jump between the gaps, right? If you come back to the, this graph where it is, you come back here, here the lines will be going from here to here and then we have to jump it from here directly to here because these regions are not having no values right for that there is a sigmoid graph which is used in the logistic regression okay all right uh, let's come to the data set and train it So, uh, empty water safety. DF is there. All right. So, features you all know, right? What are the features? Sepal lens, sepal width, petal length, petal width. Okay. All those are features for you. Just a minute. So, I will just be given. Okay, 
So first we need to write the x train and then the y train. Now I'll make clear what is x train, y train, y test and x test. In this data set, what will happen? See, when we go with the machine learnings, here in the regression, what will happen? See, out of this complete 150 rows, I will select some part, leave this part as the species, okay? Only see till this petal length, petal width. So what I will do here is, I'll select some part from here, like let's say till four, okay? So these much part will be my X train, that is my features, what I'll be training. So based on these training data, I'll say that when these features come, this is your output. When these features come, this is your output. So based on all these four features, I'll be giving it its output and the machine will learn that if these features come, these are my output, okay? And after that, from this data set only, I'll take some part of the data and then I'll feed it to the machine to check whether the corresponding results what machine are giving is correct or not. Clear? So that is called your X train, X test, Y train and Y test. So this is your training data, this one, don't select the set of that. This is, these are your training data uh, till here, not there. Okay, you remove that set of parts. Yeah. Uh, so, sir, uh, it is have some measurement how many data for the test and how many data for the train. Then that depends on you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It is a, uh, always user dependent. Yeah, like, yeah. Random state, training size, testing size, what you like. First, you give some size, okay? A 0.31, something like that, okay? You first give the size and then you look whether your results, your, what you are expecting is it getting correct or not. If you're not correct, then in, like increase the training size then. Or even if you're not getting correct, then increase the testing size. Okay. Like that you have to test it. And once you'll not be getting anything. Okay. All right. Uh, where was I? This is your probability is where we were we are sharing sometimes right okay so you are getting right now i haven't shared this okay fine so out of this these much part would be your training data and this is your testing data okay now again this comes your white test a white train okay because you'd be feeding it to the machine to get these results so that is your testing and training things. I guess that would be helpful to you, right? So those are the part where we'll be going with the testing and your training things, okay? Now if we come back to have the pair plot, if I just paste the code here, that is not defined. So you'll find that the species are having different, different categories. The side is having three different categories, what you see in a pair plot. And you can even save this, like when you'll be making projects, you'll be saving your graphs, otherwise how you'll be loading it. Or you have to uh, sum it in the PDF format. Okay, so out of this, if we say, which is the most separatable category, so what we'll say that most separatable category is Setosa. Again, every graph you can see it is being separated. Because its values are separated from others. Okay. Something is syntax for weight in a CSV file. I uh, didn't get you. We'll see it after the class. This is having okay, okay. And the regressions line what I'm saying is So you find this as a regression line, again the iris would be difficult, yeah, I guess. So, 
lm plot basically a regression line plotting so you can use the lg uh, reg plot too right so what do you see here most of the dots are being coming to the lines right not even if then we can use the reg plot For regression plotting, so what is a hmm. huge semantic not needed? So you can find a line over there covering a points. Now, as the data is untrained, you get this line. Okay, so once your data is trained, we'll be having some different things, right? You'll be having graphs at different files, different of types. Our main focus is to predict the things and then to make a good accuracy model okay so we'll be selecting now some features so let's say this df is equals to iris iris is not defined very good Now I'm making it like X and Y, where I say that X is nothing but the sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width, and iris are the species. Y are the species. X and Y, now you can look on. X are uh, these attributes, we can say independent to variables, and these are your Y. So I'll write X dot header, some 2, 3. And same with the Y. Then find Y as a series okay now these will be shuffled once and sent in a training all right okay now what you need to do is you need to uh, insert the logistic regression okay so you need to write this that from sklearn.linear model import logistic regression and then i say this iris model have a name of IR model and I'll pass this logistic regression function to this okay after passing what do you do is you have to fit the values of your X and Y what you have made it okay so it would be like fit your X and Y values in the model. Once fit, we get some warnings and all it will be done. Okay, so it will give you some things or like class way, dual fit and intercepts, okay, ratios and all. Okay, and then you would have to look onto the classification report to see your, you know, like uh, reports what you need, like accuracy and all, intercepts, okay. And then you can predict the things easily. Okay, so let's see the thing. Classification report. You can go with the accuracy. Uh, you can go with the confusion matrix too. I don't know. Not even look at things right now. Accuracy is there some problems? Let's keep a matrix in both of these. Okay, fine. Okay. All right. Now let's say that we want to predict some data, right? Now if we look on to the your X, and X is having things, okay? And your Y is having things, okay? So now we haven't shuffled the things, right? Because we haven't separated the training and the just splitting parts of the things, okay? And that we'll be doing in the next project so that we make clear to you. Okay. Now let's say that predictions would be IR underscore your model dot predict your x values and now we'll be getting a graph uh, we'll be uh, looking onto these scores okay so how do you find the accuracy score out to the classification report of your x versus the y Oh, 
point of this prediction. So, so we get some accuracy sample values of around 97. Now, as we see it. Why your predictions? So ninety seven point three percent. Then you can make it make it the percent if you want. Around make it round of two, two ones. Okay. Ninety three point uh, ninety seven point three percent. All right. Now we want to predict. So your machine has been made, right? So you need to predict it. What you will be doing? We're taking very small things, like for predictions. Like let's say, I take some data. So like I say, nine point four, four point six, five point zero, one point five uh, model dot predict. So it will say which species it is. Was it color? So now even if my model, if I say the simple length. The iris dot even if I find the max value of the sepal length is 7.9 still see uh, I'm giving values more than 7.9 still my model is able to find the values right this could be things okay uh, coming back now uh, we'll be going with the tightening data set discussed okay now here in the data set we have loaded this data set okay first we'll be going with the head to see like name sex age sibling and what are the things these are the passenger IDs survived 100 passengers classes are being given okay sib SP means your sibling and spouses you are having okay then parents and children the ticket fair cabin and the back now here the thing what we need to predict is the survival whether the passenger has survival or not so for passenger survival we don't require some of the attributes or some of the columns so like we don't require the ticket number of the passenger we don't require the passenger id we don't require the names right if i say that this is mr william henry then is it something like whose name would be william henry they have to survive no, right. So we have to check on to some of the columns. Now, uh, when you give more data in your weights, or when you give more data, uh, see in regressions when you do machine learning, what happens uh, when you are not giving any algorithms? Then you have to write on your weights, right? When you are uh, writing the algorithms, then you know you must know that algorithms has got a good, uh, you know functions and formulas and all the rest things to apply weights easily but still if you want to change then you can give your own so, okay so going ahead infos and all these are the basic things you can go with right, right and passengers travels and all you'd be getting in the videos i think you might have seen okay okay so we quickly come to the wrangling part okay. null values are there first important thing in machine learning or even in the data science when you're doing any projects right guys you need, the very first thing is to remove the nullity of your data okay so first remove it what do you say drop cabin we don't require cabin one where it is where is it i think after dropping where you're getting in place you got to do uh if you come back here in the things you'd find a cabin column where it is here because it is having nan values a lot of nan values but still i see that there are some more null values left after dropping the cave in two. So what I do is I directly drop all the null values in place equals true and I see these results without null values. See this graph is having a very clean graph which stands for zero having no null values in any columns, any rows. Okay, now going ahead now see when you are moving with a logistic regression because that is included in the course so logistic regression when you go through the very important thing is to be kept in mind that the more you can go with the boolean data is very good 
the more boolean data you go with the more accurate results you'll be getting so in this thing what i can find is that boolean results are only in siblings parents and the survives that's it otherwise the rest things are having like string data's fair again here so what i'll do what i will be doing is basically i'll be converting things in the boolean so i'll say get dummies value of this x column so sex of the first and i'm getting here is male and the female so if it is zero then it is male right because it, if it female is zero then it is male and if it male is one uh, male is zero then it is female so any one column can tell me that whether it is a female or a male so i will be dropping the first one that is drop true equal drop first equals true so male will tell me that first one is a male or a female right like that i'll be giving to the embark column where i'll be having q s and i think one more is there uh, c q for your queenstown as for south hampton and c for chelmont okay three different places from where the people have embarked okay now uh, like that if drop first can tell you like if it is 0 0 like if the passenger has not embarked from the queenstown even and not even from the south hampton then we can say that the passenger has embarked from the chelmont right so like that we'll be making the boolean classes like the classes 1 2 3 if it is not in the second class not in the third class then obviously in the first class if not in the second class then in the third class here like that so after uh, removing all the things unwanted results and after coming in a boolean values what we'll be doing is we'll be concatenating the things merging your data right so titanic sex and embark and the cl what we have made here with the titanic exactly the same data set in the xs1 you have to concatenate row wise don't go with x is zero it will make a lot of changes the so ones changes are made you have to go with the first thing again import your data and again go with the things that is difficult right so write things clearly and then head and now you can find that all the most of the things i can find is the boolean result i see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 columns are right now having boolean results so now i don't need p class now i don't need passenger id i don't need name i don't need sex i don't need age and sibling spouses and the parents uh, sibling spouses and parent children would be there age could be there ticket and fare fare is also important right embark can be removed okay so all these unwanted can be removed with the in place true and now this would be your final thing to look on okay right and then you can convert to a csv file or you can do whatever okay so now the thing comes of your splitting your data set so i'll say that x would be the data set dot drop all the categories only after dropping the survived basically what will be important that if i drop survived because that is my y if you go with the y equals mx plus c right if you think like that then all the attributes are important for getting the y that is survival so i'll drop the y survived and rest everything would be my training data set and this would be my testing one that is y would be my outcome so these all are my things for training and all these are my outcome so if all these are the features a is 22 there's this there's this there's this and all if it is a male and this all then he is not survived so like this the machine will be learning now so i'll be importing train test and split so x train x test y train and y test what i say to you i'll be taking it train test split x y testing size i'm giving as a 0.33 out of 1 Okay, I'm giving as 0.33, 33 percent. You can say out of 100. Random state is for one, like once for one side we're training it. Okay, so if I give one, two, three, four, it will be keeping on like in the training part for two times, three times, four times, depends on you. So I'm giving it the model name as logistic regression, fitting the X train and Y train here, and the rest things have been done. So predictions now you can see has been shuffled, right? So predictions can be done using X test and X train. You can look on here. white train has also gone suffered okay and x test has been there same with the length of x train see what i imported in the first one is 712 data out of which i took testing size as 235 for testing and for training i took 477 data okay and y test head is giving you the things right 
Now import classification report, file test and predictions. Okay. I say uh, the accuracy score and as things have been predicted at right. So accuracy score is giving 79.14. That is good, right? And your total score of index and wise are 80. That is your nice. You can say the model is good. The scatter plotting is there and you're getting the things. Confusion matrix says 116 values were there, okay, and you predicted 70 correct. 26 out of where you predicted 23 correct. 23 wrong, sorry, okay. So like this, you can see the things. And now if you want to check the survival of this passenger, how would you do? You have to give all the things like age, sibling, parts, fair, male, and rest all the things. Like if you want, I can run this one. Just a minute, let me run this. Uh, Say, so check it here even right now. If it runs, name it. PD is not kind of ops. Uh, hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, in this data set, you uh, tried in logistic regression. Mm -hmm. Can I uh, try the other model like uh, SVM? Yeah, you, want, you can try. I'll just show you a sample project how you can use uh, algorithms to use it. Okay, you can use any algorithms. Where is it? Where is it? Just a minute. But, sir, uh, our goal is uh, what is the correct answer we can guess? Ready? Yeah, that I'm doing right now. Just wait. Some things has been removed, I guess. Stop this video.